Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. My name is Bobby and this is how I grow orchids and carnivorous plants. Hello and welcome to Cloud Force Vibes. So today's video, I've got a selection of Bulbophyllum orchids pulled out here and we're going to go ahead and maintenance them. They all have various things that are wrong with them in one way or another, mostly floating pseudobulbs and rhizomes and things like that. And we are going to go ahead and take a look at that today and show you how to prevent that. Some of them are going to get a freshen up of moss and other things. Some of them are going to get taken off the mound altogether if possible and freshened up and remounted a different way. But they all have, again, something that needs to be looked at, and we are going to do that today. To follow up on my video from a week or so ago where we had a chat about bulbophyllums and some of the things you can do to help them grow better. So I'm going to go through these plants real quick and then we'll get closer up and take a look at them as I am doing some quick maintenance on them. It's not going to be too in depth with some of it because a lot of it's really straightforward. Once you've seen it on a, a plant or two, you've seen it on all of them. So anyhow, this is Bulbophyllum ambrosia. This is Bulbophyllum odontopedalum. Intercetum or Odontopedalum. Um, I bought it as Odontopedalum. This here is Cirrhopedalum or Bulbophyllum familio. This is Bulbophyllum miniatum variation mark. This is Bulbophyllum lasiocylum, the regular variety. And this is Bulbophyllum lasiocylum variety dark. So I think we're going to start with this one and work our way that way, one way or another. But um, yeah, without further ado, here we go. So here we have our Bulbophyllum lasiocylum far dark and as you can see I have got tons and tons of new growths but the majority of them are floating. They are all just hanging out there in the wind so I did that last year and forgot to go back and tamp these ones down and as you can see this growth here is small it does not have nearly the roots it should and that is the problem that you get when you let your Bulbophyllums just ramble wild, at least some of them. Some like to do it, but most of them want to have the rhizome touching something. So I'm going to take some good old trusty fishing line here. I do not have the rubber bands. Uh, Daryl Adams gave me a really great idea about using rubber bands to um, wrangle these in, but I did not manage to get those in time. So we're going to use fishing line this time, and I am going to have to order those bands because that really is a great idea. So. I'm going to take a good healthy section of this line off. Don't know how much we're going to need. And we're going to tie a little surgeon's loop. So you make a loop with the knot. I'm sorry, you make a loop with the line. You leave yourself a tag end. I like to pinch that part with my fingers. I take the loop, tie it around itself, and leave the loop just like that and you take the whole thing you put it through itself you make like a little lasso similar to the slip knot method a lot of people use you still get the little loop here you still put your line through and have an area you can tie your line off onto for your tag end and it just works really really well for me that is my preferred way of doing this. So I'll slip that on down here somewhere. And all I'm going to do is go through individually, Let's see if I can get a little closer in. go through here, make a wrap, get the line where I want it. Hopefully with one turn I'm going to be able to get these two and maybe even this one. So I'm going to pin that down where I want it. I'm going to come in under this growth here, right on top of that, and pin that thing down. 
I'm going to adjust this over to where it's going to be touching. Go under that growth and do the same thing. So now those two growths are right there. This new one still needs to be attached, but these growths are now touching. So with the line, we're going to gently, I think, go behind uh, the older bulb and try to pull it up a little bit. right there so we have an area we can pin that with our next turn. We're going to move up slightly with the location of this. I've got a floater here. I'm going to come in high behind that bulb. Gently across our new growth here. pin that one in as well. Just like that. So now that new growth is also touching a portion of the moss. Coming through here, that one that we put down earlier on this side, we're also going to get that one with that wrap. Nice and easy. We have just cleaned up a whole section of that plant with just a couple wraps with a little bit of fishing line. So I'm going to come out again. I'm going to continue to do that here for just a second and get the rest of these pinned down the way we want it and I will be back and I will show you the finished product. Alright so here is our orchid and as you can see nothing is left dangling anywhere. I went in and I have tied off every little growth everywhere on this plant so everything is now pinned down nice and tight all over and we shouldn't have any issues with this plant moving forward. I'm going to go through the other couple that need that and I'm going to do the same thing and I'll be back to show you those because that is the only issue with about three of these and we'll come back to look at the others. So I am down to my second to last bowl of film. I have got the four that I need to take care of with just strapping stuff, all taken care of. The uh, only exception to that is this. This is the Bulbophyllum miniatum, and I did remove all of the moss before I strapped it right back in place where it was. That Bulbophyllum, as I've mentioned before, has a wet dry cycle, and the roots really do not like the moss. They seem to prefer, if you don't notice, if you didn't notice, the bare bark. So that is exactly what we're going to give this plant in the hopes that it remains to be happy and even happier. This little Bulbophyllum intercetum or Odontopedalum, I have done the same thing. I'm removing all of the moss from this mount. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this plant almost died the first time I unmounted it. It was too wet and it is just falling into pieces again. It was too wet on here I made the mistake, the classic mistake, of putting moss underneath this orchid. I did it because I'm stupid, <laughs> but I, I just felt like maybe it would help, even though I knew better. Uh, sometimes we do that. Sometimes you see a plant and you take it out of a condition and it's not doing great for whatever reason here or there, and you end up doing basically the exact same thing all over again. So. I'm going to leave this plant on this mat. You know what? Maybe not. No, I'm not. This is a perfect mount for something much larger. I'm going to go ahead and find a new mount for this plant. I will be right back. Eventually. So here we are back in the grow room with all of our bulba films. I am sorry I didn't finish the video out there, but I lost all of my good light for filming. So. Um, I've got everything sorted out here. I've got the ambrosia. Everything's nice and tied onto the mount again. Same thing with the Lassio Kylums, both of them got everything nice and tied up onto this mount and everything should be happy and grow well from here on out. The Mini Atom, what I ended up doing with that was the exact same thing, except like I said, I pulled all of the moss off of this mount as well. And the other two, the little Odontopedalum here on the left and the Pomilio here on the right, both of those plants ended up getting a new mount 
and I did not put any moss on it. I'm going to try a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to grow these two in the tank for a little while and see if they do better with just getting daily waterings on this mount inside the higher humidity. I think, at least this one, I have a feeling it's going to really, really help at least one of these plants. This one is much more poorly off than I was hoping it would be. I really do want to see this plant bloom, but I'm having issues. I've got lots and lots of root loss. It stayed too moist for too long. Again, I put moss underneath the plant and I never, ever, ever should have done that with either of these two little bulbophyllums. So having that said, that is my video for the day. I do appreciate you guys as always for joining in and I hope you enjoyed my little care video and maintenance video on these bulbophyllums. The only thing I have left to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some Espoma garden lime on these three up here because the moss probably needs it. It'll help neutralize the pH and make those more suitable at least for one more year before I tear all the mouse off, moss off of these and end up redoing them, which still honestly may happen. I'm not sure. I just didn't feel like doing it today. This is only a year old, both of these, and this one's two, but I've really, you know, I really think it's okay for now. I may end up really regretting that later, but I guess we'll find out. Anyhow, that's the only thing I have left to do. I'm going to give them all a good watering. I'm going to give some of them some garden lime, and I may even do the same thing with these. Just put some lime on the mount, water it in a little bit, help them get that calcium and magnesium, and also help neutralize the pH of the mount itself for the roots to grow. This one doesn't have any roots. Don't really have to worry about that, but this one does have a few, and it would be nice if it took to the mount quickly. So, anyhow, that's my video for the day. Thank you so much again for joining, and I do always appreciate it. Until next time, happy growing, and please stay safe.